Hey guys, welcome back to another action figure review. Today we have a new series from the Four Horsemen Studios, Cosmic Legions. Starting off today's review with High Warden Slog. Similar to the Mythic Legion toy line, we have a series of figures with interchangeable parts, but in a futuristic space theme. On the back of the box, we have a picture of all the figures released so far in the first wave of the series. On the side of the box, we have lore on the actual character itself, with small pictures on the top. Well, on the other side, we have a short paragraph of the lore of Series 1 characters and factions. Like the other larger figures released so far in the Four Horsemen lineup, we have a large cardboard box with the figure secured by plastic clamshell packaging. We have an accessory tray with all the accessories attached to the back that's removed first. After removing all the twist ties, we can then remove the plastic tray in front, as well as the plastic wrapped around the legs. After the figure is removed, the last step is to remove the tightly packed helmet and the plastic sheet and tray underneath. High Warden Slog is the brutal tyrant that oversees the prisoners of the manufacturing world of Valkatar. Equipped with a custom life support system, Slog's entire body was burned by a foreign atmosphere at a young age, requiring him to be sealed in his suit at all times. A special regenerative serum called Thrixium is constantly administered into his suit by the Tusk Engineers. It provides moisture to his burned and damaged skin, preventing Slog's death from his injuries. While the serum will stave off death, every movement Slog makes is filled with pain and agony. Just like the prisoner Slog overseers, he is also stuck on this planet. As not only is Slog's custom life support equipment managed by the Tusk Engineers, Valkatar is also the manufacturer of the Thrixium Serum that allows Slog to have a never-ending supply of. Let's check out the details. A giant see-through dome covers the entire head of Slog. A light frosted effect can be seen towards the bottom of the dome, with the entire piece having a misty, foggy effect, giving off the impressive effect of looking wet and foggy on the inside. With the dome removed, we have a better look at the sculpting details underneath. A giant green blob of a head, the skin is sculpted with many wrinkles, folds, and cracks, with a large scar running down to the left eye. A single red, yellow, and black eye is detailed on the right, with the scar running down past the left eye, blinded, and clouded by the injury. The mouth of the figure is almost frog-like, with a massive frown of folded skin layered over each other, giving the figure a grumpy look. Wrapped around the neck of the blob is a metal collar detailed with panels, screws, ports, and wires with room to insert the dome into. More wrinkles and skin folds are on the side of the head along with a large, softer looking opening, presumably an ear. Large plates of cracked skin transition into the back of the head with a large vein running down from the top. An impressive amount of details in the sculpt and paint application can be seen on the chest. A spacesuit made of many parts, we have a large bronze and brown cloth threaded tubes running down the center of the chest, each stained and some of the sculpt even corroded with rust. Large brown and silver canisters are attached to the chest with small compartments and screws for the details. A large gray circular exhaust port is attached to the back of the suit, detailed with screws, a symmetrical machine design, and more copper pipes wrapping around the shoulders. On top of the orange prison style jumpsuit, we have the Tusk logo on the plate of gray panel armor, detailed with large rivets, a leather elbow pad, and more tubing. Underneath the shoulder, we have a better look at the orange prison style jumpsuit, detailed with wrinkles and a fine threaded texture as well. With the right shoulder having a similar design of armor, instead with more copper ports. The arms are free from the suit, almost glowing in a neon green color, in a dark dry brush effect making the skin look corroded and toxic. The three fingered hand shares the same corroded neon green effect of the skin with large flat gray nails at the fingertips. Similar to the chest, the waist is completely covered in machinery and parts. On top of the plate covering the groin, we have a few dials, gauges, red, blue, and yellow buttons, as well as a small screen with an alien language on it. We can see more copper tubing and threaded straps wrapping around the waist and a large detailed bronze canister hanging from the bottom of the suit. Following the tubing wrapping around the waist, we have more objects tied to the copper tubing, small boxes and ports as well as a panel with a few colored buttons on it. Finishing the details on the waist, the back has a large leather straps covering the gray machinery here, secured down by brown belts and black latches. The copper tubing connects to the center of the armor with another bronze canister hanging underneath it. We have many circular ports here, with two of them at the center that are able to be covered up with an accessory later on in the review. 
Covering up the thighs are more plates of gray armor with futuristic panels stacked on top of each other. Underneath the large silver port, we have more alien writing stamped into the armor with a corroded rust effect towards the knee. Underneath, the armor rests on top of brown leather padding, detailed with ridges, a cracked texture effect, and cuts in the sculpting. A similar design is used on the left leg, just without the logo, but instead the sculpt filled with even more ports and dials. The short, chicken-style legs of the figure bend backward, where we can see the orange suit ending in a metal collar at the middle, exposing the neon green wrinkled skin of the legs. A large slug-like foot almost melts into the ground, with two large toes, each with its own black nail. And we wrap up the details with the bottom of the feet. It's just a nice detail that even the bottom of the feet are fully sculpted and detailed with wrinkles and folds of the skin, giving it a thumbprint effect. Let's see the articulation of this giant. To get at the head articulation, we first remove the dome. This allows us to rotate the head. Removing the head shows us the neck joint here, allowing us to bend the ball joint forward and back, rotate, and pivot the ball joint in any direction. The shoulders can open and rotate fully. Just keep in mind that the sculpting here can block the range if too tightly closed or opened. We have rotation at the elbow and a single joint that bends inward. The hands rotate and bend up and down. We have only rotation at the waist with full rotation being blocked by the sculpting at more extreme ranges. We have large ball jointed legs that allows us to bend forward and back and open a decent amount. The large ball joint here will also let us pivot in most directions before the armor blocks the range. On the legs we have rotation cleverly hidden by the sculpt. And finally, a foot that bends up and down and twists. High Warden Slog has its own unique scale that Four Horsemen Studios have called the meatball size. Standing short next to the massive troll scale figure, the ice troll towers above Slog. Going back down to the ogre scale of Mythic Legions, we can see that still Slog is shorter than this scale, something I was not expecting, I assumed they would have been similar in height. Next to normal scale figures from Mythic Legions, we can see how Slog sizes up to the standard size. With just a couple of inches taller, Slog's real presence come from how wide the figure is, taking up much more space than the few regular sized figures. And even next to the 2.0 style slim figures, Slog's arm alone is about the size of the body of the figure. Next to some McFarlane Warhammer figures, even with McFarlane's larger 7 inch scale, Slog still makes the figures look small by comparison truly making Slog a unique in his meatball scale. Finally, next to some standard 6 inch size figures from Hasbro, Slog looks great next to figures of this scale, with none of them looking out of place thanks to Slog's monstrous appearance, making him fit in in just about any sci-fi setting or scale. We get an alternate head for Slog, an open mouth roaring expression, with the same giant socket at the bottom. To install the alternate head, you first remove the dome and easily slide off the original. One thing to note is that the head is extremely loose and just slides off on its own, not being secure at all. Afterwards, you can easily socket in the new head with the same rotation as the original. We have a small data screen device detailed with colored buttons and a screen with Slog himself on it and the large dial at the center. A close-up of the data screen shows Slog in a higher detail. At the bottom of the device, we have a large metal wire made of an extremely soft plastic that's completely bendable. To install the scanning device, I prefer taking off the hands, then sliding the device into place into the open grabbing hand, then attaching the hand back onto the body. With the hand firmly grabbing the tool, you can then attach that soft metal tubing into one of the ports on the back of the body, usually the one with the side of the hand holding it. We get a pair of alternate hands in a closed fist position, painted to match the originals in that neon green effect. In order to swap out the hands, the figure has big bulky joints making it very easy to remove and peg back in. Lastly, while not an accessory, you are able to remove the canisters on the body and place them back in. This includes the small canisters as well and on both sides of the body. 
you can get Slog to hold the smaller canisters in a non-convincing effect. Slog is a very interesting look into the Cosmic Legion series and a nice debut of what changes are to come in Four Horsemen's designs. With Series 1 being a new body type, the meatball size, it's already confirmed that we will see more figures in this format with Slog being the first. With an entirely new design and theme, Cosmic Legions feels right at home in terms of quality, sculpting, and paint detail, with every aspect of this figure covered in either an impressive sculpt or effects used by the paint. The foggy dome effect is beyond expectations. Where most toy companies would have just settled for a clear plastic transparent piece of plastic, we have the frosted edges and the foggy interior that just pushes the quality of the figure even further. The included accessories do feel like an afterthought, as the scanner equipment doesn't really feel like something a brutal warden would carry, but as it's attached to his suit, it's just another lore-related annoyance Slog has to deal with. The removable canisters are a very nice effect. I can only imagine that they will be replaced with other unique accessories in the future. But if those canisters are where the Thrixium is administered, then it would have been a nice deal to have Thrixium residue painted there instead of being unpainted. The alternate head is amazing as well, with the inside of the mouth coated in a glossy finish and the angered expression making this figure more interesting to display. It's a face I'm going to leave on permanently for my display. Articulation wise, you can see that Four Horsemen really tried to get every inch of range out of this figure that they could have. But with such a unique bulky shaped body, right from the pre-order it was apparent that we weren't going to get any real dynamic poses out of this blob. Slog is an amazing introduction into the Cosmic Legion series for me. High Warden Slog is a unique figure that truly stands out from the rest of my collection and is already the perfect centerpiece to the Cosmic Legions. While I wait for the rest of my order to ship, Slog is a great figure to pose and to mix and match with my other figures from different toy lines. With the scale only being a few inches taller than 6 inch scale figures, Slog fits into just about any other sci-fi toy line and even if you're not going to collect Cosmic Legions, Slog still makes a great boss enemy for your collection. He's not as big as I expected, the size comparison really surprised me, but with this new body type, the only good things can come from Four Horsemen Studios, with more meatball scale figures to mix and match with my other collections. Overall Slog is very impressive, pre-orders are shipping out at the time of this video so a store sale should be up soon from Four Horsemen or your other favorite retailer. He's definitely a unique looking figure, that monster collectors will not want to miss out on. Alright guys that's it for this review, leave a comment letting me know how you like this figure, subscribe or share this video with your friends to help out the channel.